Welcome to Wisconsin Family. I'm Justin Riley. And I'm Jessa Jeremiah. And boy, we have a great show, as usual, but yeah. I'm really excited about today's show. We are on location at J&K Security Solutions, and we are talking surveillance cameras We today. are. Yeah, I think it's a neat topic because I think a lot of folks have probably thought about getting a surveillance camera, maybe haven't made the leap, right. or have been worried about what kind of financial commitment it might be. Right. We're going to learn about all those things a little bit later. And technology, too. The technology has technology changed. Technology has come a long way since yes. the, the advent of surveillance cameras. Yes, and we were reminded by that by being in the smart home because there is so much great new technology that Absolutely. is actually really quite easy to install. One of the great things about being here. Non-invasive to non -invasive, install. Non-invasive, yes. Yeah. Way, to, yeah. way to put that. We're going to be talking about uh, paintball, actually, as well. A totally different topic, but I love chatting with uh, Doug from the Siege. He's going to be talking about some great Great events, great summer events. I mean, they're open all year round, but they what are. a fun thing for uh, actually kids and families to go try paintball and laser tag. They have low impact paintballs. He's going to talk about that to try to get people to, to be less uh, uh, apprehensive about trying. Yes, it. I love it. And you know what I want to do is have a laser tag party in my backyard. There you go. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that too. We'll also be joined by John and Chris from AccuClimb Mechanical Services. They're bringing some guests, some uh, oh. some customers of theirs, some loyal customers. So they're going to talk about some of the things that AccuClimb can do for you as we head into summer. So that's coming up right after the break here on Wisconsin Family. Hey folks, welcome back to Wisconsin Family. We are here on location at J&K Security Solutions at their model smart home. We're really excited to talk to those folks later on in the program, but first, you should recognize at least two of these four faces here. We're joined now by Chris Premus and John Mankowski from AccuClimb Mechanical Services. How are you guys? Good to Good see thing. you again, Thanks Justin. for having us back. Yeah, absolutely. And you brought some guests with you today. This is Dan and Tricia Stearns. Welcome, guys. Hi. Hi, thank you. So you guys, it's your first time on TV. Yes. Glad to have you on the Wisconsin <laughs> family. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about yourselves, first of all. Give viewers a little bit of background of where you come from, and because uh, you're customers of AccuClimb. Right. And you're going to talk to us a little bit about how they've worked with you in the past, how you've worked with them. So give us a little bit of background of where you guys come from. What, what do you do for professions? I'm a graphic artist okay. and I work for a software company in user experience. Okay, excellent. I'm a copywriter and I work for a supplement company doing uh, research and marketing writing. Great, great, good for you. Now you've worked with AccuClimb for about four years now, is that right? Yes. Okay, and uh, with so many different contractors on the market, um, you know, can you tell us what's kept you loyal to these guys for the past four years, other than their good looks? Yeah. <laughs> Charming personality. <Right. laughs> uh, definitely the service. Okay. We, we've always done a great job and gone above and beyond. Whenever we've called and needed them to come out, there's been no, no question whatsoever. And uh, their response is timely and just, they've been great to work with. Yeah, they, they answer their phone. Yes, really yes, do. that's and that which helps. That's a good first step. <laughs> yeah. With a warm body. Yeah. 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 That's machine right. there. There's a real person there. There's yeah. a real person yeah. on the other end. So um, can you give um, specific examples of how you worked with them in the past? What have you called them for? Well, uh, one very recent example was uh, I, it, a condenser pump. I'm not sure what you call it. It was a condensate pump. Condensate pump uh, went out. Condensate on, it, was a, it was old to begin with. Okay. And it went out and... and uh, First thing we noticed was a bit of water on the basement floor, and then I called AccuClimb and I thought, I think I need someone to come out here and take yeah. a look at this. Well, John was in town anyway. He was in town uh, for his daughter's swim meet. Sure. And I got a hold of, he called me back and he said, I can stop out there and take a look. Right. And said, um, how handy are you in yeah. fixing this? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, he went out and actually picked up the part. Okay. And it came back between his daughter's swim meets. All right. And, and uh, stopped by and then showed me how to set it up. And oh. we would have been there most of the day, otherwise, if not longer, trying to figure that out on our, on our own. So sure. we stopped by, helped us set it up, got yeah. it going again, and uh, was working great and still working great. That's right? awesome. So, yeah. Now, to me, if I saw something like that, I wouldn't even think, like, I should probably try to do this myself. Right. Ever. Normally, <laughs> I don't. Yeah. <laughs> well, that doesn't seem right. Water in the basement. Yes. Floor, so. 
Uh, so you'd recommend them as a trusted contractor? Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. They've, they've always gone above and beyond, and they just do a great job. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So, uh, John, I'm going to turn to you for a second. Uh, we're, uh, you know, people are always trying to save money. There's a lot of do-it-yourselfers out there, um, but there's also some some deals that you have coming up. I understand. But what kind of rebates are out there? Um, like, if I wanted to replace my existing furnace or air conditioner. Well, Lennox has got a good program going right now. They have uh, uh, up to seventeen hundred dollars back in manufacturer rebates wow. that come back in the mail through you. Uh, focus on energy if you put in the right system and use a smart thermostat now. That rebate's gone from $250 to $300. And the real exciting thing is the 25C tax credit has oh. come back. And you can retroactive that all the way back to 2012. So if you've done a furnace air conditioner and it exceeds 18 sear back before 20 to 2012, yeah. excuse me, yeah. uh, you can get up to about $500 back on that. Wow, wow. So all in all, I'm trying to kind of keep track in my head that's close to $3,000, it sounds that like. That is, but one thing you want to make sure with the 25C, talk to your accountant about sure, it because yeah. those folks are the professionals and they can make sure it's filed properly. Sure, wow, wow. So $1,700, up to $1,700 that Lennox alone is yep. willing to give on Lennox will give you seventeen, and then Focus on, uh, Focus on Energy out of, out of uh, Wisconsin, obviously, will give you another 300 Focus on Energy, great, great. And Chris, um, what should those of us who like to do it ourselves start thinking about? Uh, what, what should we be thinking about now that spring is here? Well, you can always you know, rinse down your outdoor unit. Okay. Get some of that leftover pollen or something that may sure. have been on the system from the end of the season last year. I think we had a bad cottonwood season last year. Okay. Um, change that filter. That's yeah. got to be done regularly. Um, that is your lifeblood. It is. Depending on the type of filter, it can actually uh, be need to be changed as much as once a month. And you're talking about the filter that's in our, our the air filter, the yep. air filter yep. inside, correct? You know, basement yep. or whatever, wherever our furnace is, correct. Um, you know, before you start an air conditioner up, just make sure you've taken the top off of it. If some people wrap it up each season, sure, we've sure. had a couple of service calls with that. You know, take that cover off, the top sure. off. Yeah. Make sure the circuit breaker is turned on. And you know, when you first turn on, make sure there's no funny noises. Change the filter if it needs to be done. Sure. And uh, you know, and then give us a call and get a real tune-up scheduled. Sure. But at least you're up and running. And you mentioned rinsing it out. I never, yeah. I didn't know that was even possible. So you well, can actually rinse out your air conditioner. Well, if you can see the bare coil, what you okay. want to do is make sure the system's turned off, sure. and just take a hose and a very soft spray nozzle. You don't right. want to spray yeah. it at no hard. power wash. Exactly <laughs> right. Um, and what you want to do is just kind of rinse the edge off, spraying downward, just the outside edge, uh -huh. um, and that will take care of any. Uh, cottonwood or anything like that, pollen, at least give it a rinse. Sure. And then when we would come out, if it needed to be actually cleaned, sure. where we use you know, a safe uh, chemical for the environment, and then we actually wash it off with better pressure and stuff like that, take it apart, clean it, Got it. and that if that needs to be done. But we were able to check that via the pressures and things when we do our tune-up. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the rinsing is not a replacement for for a real tune-up or cleaning. Right? No, 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 that's just not make, at all. Right. That's right. essentially cleaning off the coil to get all the dust and dirt yep. from the window. Okay, right. excellent. But a good tune-up is always something that's in order. Absolutely. So, all you right. change your oil in your car. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. That's true. John and Chris from Climb Mechanical Services, thank you so much for joining us. And Dan and Trisha, thank you so much for joining us thank today. You. It was good to have you with thank us. You. Thanks. Thanks for having Thanks all us. Us. Don't go away. There's more Wisconsin Family coming up right after this. Stick around. Welcome back to Wisconsin Family. We are on location at J&K Security Solutions, their model smart home here on South Park Street. And we're going to be talking about surveillance cameras later on. In we the sure are. This is a great place to stop in one of these days. Yeah. We'll chat with them in a bit. Yeah, but first, before surveillance cameras, we're going to talk parties and paintball with Doug DeBack from the Siege Paintball in McGuanago. Welcome, Doug. How are you? Good. How are you guys? Good. Always good to have you with us today. So talk to us a little bit about the different types of parties you have for, for outdoor events. Yeah, I mean, primarily people think of us as a paintball place. Right. Um, but uh, we offer our regular paintball, mm -hmm. um, and I got an example there of the regular size paintballs. We did bring in, and we're making a big push on our low impact paintball. Right, yeah. Which is really good for mixed groups or just younger kids, and we mm -hmm. go to a lower age on that. And then we also have laser tag. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, that's, cool. that's kind of neat that you have a laser tag. We'll get to that in a little <laughs> bit. But talk to us, Ju Justin mentioned parties. So if you do wind up having a party or a group come out, how do you know of these different kinds? What's, what's best to choose? Well, over the phone we'll walk you through it, as well as okay. our online booking has different descriptions as far as, you know, what might be best for your group. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've so, but like every, everybody that calls, we kind of try to cater to the 
the booking to them. Sure. Um, so if you have a question, it, it's always best to call. And I think it's really great that if you didn't know you're a paintball fan yourself or you're just looking for a fun activity to do, that you can you can have kids come. So you actually have an option for some of the younger players. Yeah, so right now it's a down to 10 on the regular paintball, down mm -hmm. to eight on the low impact paintball, and any age on the can do laser, laser tag. tag. Okay. So, so really almost all ages can, okay. can do that. That's cool, that's, awesome. that's cool. So I'm looking at the difference in these um, in these paintballs, and this is, this is the regular, and this is, it's called 50 cal. 50 cal or low impact. Yeah, what's the difference between the two? Yeah, so the ball, um, you know, is obviously smaller. Uh -huh. It's about a third of the mass. Okay. And that's that's the biggest difference. They actually leave the gun at the same velocity or speed. Okay. Um, but um, because the ball weighs so much less, the impact is a lot less. Okay. See. Okay. So what is the 50 cal? What does that mean? Um, it's a 50 caliber, so it's a measurement caliber. of the size. Got so it. the standard paintball would be a 68 caliber. Okay. Awesome. It doesn't okay. sound that much difference, but when you're talking about a sphere, yeah. Um, it ends up being quite a bit less. Well, mass. yeah, at that speed, I'm yeah. sure it, it makes a big difference, yeah. too. And so. you can see, I mean, visually, you can see a difference between these two in oh, sizes, yeah. so, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Now, I want to get to laser tag. I am curious about laser tag. I've never played. Uh, I guess we haven't talked too much about it with you before, so tell us a little bit about that and, and the advantages of how do you do that at Siege. Yeah, so we, it's really neat because we have the option to do both. You can actually come to us and mm -hmm. play on all of our existing paintball fields. Or we can come to you um, if really? you have an area big enough. So um, we have okay. a set of inflatable bunkers and we can set them up and take them down. Oh my some, gosh. Some people at their location have stuff. Sometimes we go to camps and stuff and they have enough stuff to hide behind and use okay. as what we call bunkers. Right. Stuff to hide behind. But if you want to have like a backyard laser tag party, you got a big enough backyard, yep. you can like bring all, all the cool obstacles. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll bring 10 guns and a laptop, we run the games with the laptop where we can give them a limited amount of ammo or yeah. how many times they can get hit or... Uh, That's really run, neat. You run the games with a laptop, so it's all like a, a wireless somehow? It taps yep. in wirelessly? Yep, it all, it all goes through Wi-Fi as oh, far as wow. how it communicates with the equipment. So when somebody would hit this gun on the laptop live, I see that that person's been hit or sure. that person's been eliminated. That's incredible. Yeah. I, you would be like the coolest parent ever if you had this <laughs> backyard party for your yeah. kids. You how, know, how far do you guys travel typically for, for uh, these types of parties? We'll travel anywhere. Um, okay. We have a home you know, area, but outside that area, there's a mileage charge. Sure. So, uh, again, for that kind of stuff, just best to best to call. Sure. Yeah. Um, okay. It's kind of individualized, I suppose. Right. So. Yeah. yeah okay. And we are booking up pretty big for the uh, laser tag, especially offsite. Um, we work with a lot of camps and stuff like that. So that that's coming up to their season pretty soon. Oh, yeah. sure. Yeah. As it starts getting warmer, finally. Let's talk a little bit about some of the upcoming things that you, do, you guys are doing. So obviously you're working with some of the camps and things throughout the summer, but you guys do some events and, and fun things all year. Yeah. So we have a lot of different events coming up. Um, we have uh, we have a big game coming up in April. Um, we have uh, some tournament series coming up. We have a uh, scenario game in August that is a Vietnam uh, themed scenario. Oh my gosh. Uh, we have a lot of different specials and uh, we run uh, periodically our Grow the Sport where we actually, if you haven't played paintball before, we'll let you come and actually try it out for free. I think that's awesome. So, so uh, let's pause on that for a second because we've talked about that before, but that's one of my favorite things for people who, you know, maybe just have never done it before and always been curious or maybe you yeah. just are looking for something different to do. Yeah. You can actually try it for free and... Yeah, so with the, uh, the Grow the Sport promotion, we've been using the low impact because um, a lot of people are nervous about coming and trying it for That'd the first me. time. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we've, been, we've been running it with the low impact. We get all the equipment stuff and 100 paintballs uh, completely for free. Uh, they can buy more at that time if they need it. It's enough mm -hmm. to give them kind of a taste and see sure. if they like it. Um, and I gotta say, it, it's high. 95% or more of the people that try it, they Love wanna it. do it again. Yeah. I can't imagine. I'm, it's a fun thing to do. I've, I've, everybody that I know that plays or has played has just said really f great things about it. And obviously, you're wonderful and have a great facility. So Thank you. thanks for sharing. Yeah, real quick before we go, how can people uh, book events if they want to do groups or anything like that? How do they how do they book? Again, you know, if they have uh, a lot of questions, the best is always just to call, just call. us. Yeah. Um, we have online booking on our website. Sure. Our customers that kind of have played paintball before or been by us before, that's really easy and very automated, and they yeah. like that. Yeah, great. Awesome. Doug DeBack from the Siege Paintball, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Doug. Don't go away. When we come back, we'll be talking surveillance cameras right here at J&K Security Solutions. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Wisconsin Family. Justin and I have had been having a fabulous time here at the Model Smart Home of J&K Security Solutions off Park Street. And finally, the segment we have been promising you, we're going to talk about security cameras and how the technology has changed over the years. Boy, has it. But first, I want to introduce you to these probably familiar faces. We've got Bill Topol and Tom Spinoso joining us. And thank you for having us and hosting us. And it's always a lovely time here. Welcome. Glad to have you. Thanks for being here. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to dive a little bit into the technology aspect of security cameras. First, though, I think it's important to share with folks at home a little bit about J&K Security Solutions. This is a fabulous, fabulous company. And I want to make sure people know about it. Sure. Well, uh, J&K has been around since uh, 1985. Um, started as a key shop out of the owner's car and home and uh, settled here on Park Street in 87, became what is now JNK Security Solutions and they've been on the area ever since. Uh, it's a family owned and operated company uh, and as security has really progressed in terms of technology over the years, they've progressed with the times as well. Um, we still do keys but now we're doing commercial fire, commercial card access, residential security, commercial security. We have a hollow metal uh, division that we weld our own doors. And then uh, in the ever-changing times as well, there's the smart home division that we're in here, which we do uh, audio, video, lighting integration, HVC integration, and all of the above. Yeah, we, no big we deal. We think it's the yeah. most fun part of the Yeah, company. I mean, yeah, we work, we in, the, we work in the good part of the company. No yeah. kidding. <laughs> yeah, well, you sure do. And I just love the backstory. Thank you for sharing that because I, I love how, boy, talk about coming from, you know, really a small business to this fabulous, you know, large family-owned local business and um, it's really that's the American dream and yeah. here we are I love it <laughs> always in always uh, based out of Madison always here in southern Wisconsin so yes that's yeah really absolutely cool. so today obviously we're talking about uh, surveillance cameras and the technology as we know has really evolved quite a bit can you talk to us exactly how the technology has changed over the years for surveillance cameras Ooh. well I think one of the ways it's really progressed is the uh, evolution of network based devices mm -hmm. or IP cameras uh, most people think they see the old bread box style giant cameras on right, the outside right. of a building and they think that that's sort of security cameras and it has that analog feed. Uh, that's not necessarily the case anymore. While those are still deployed in a lot of applications, these IP cameras are, the quality of them is getting significantly better where that's what people are going towards nowadays. Uh, there's the storage is internal in some of these, they can be network based storage, they can be cloud based storage. The way we use the cameras and the internet connectivity of them has really changed how the recordings work and how people interface with them every day. That's wow. great. And how easy they are to use yeah. probably as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everyone's familiar with uh, com computers and smartphones sure. and tablets and devices. Yeah. So the interfaces are becoming much more user friendly. People mm -hmm. are being able to navigate them much simpler. Yeah. Oh, that's so neat. Talk to us a little bit about, so in talking about technology, you're really speaking to both residential and commercial. What are maybe some of the differences though in the needs between those two? Well, I think whenever you're approaching a customer in terms of either residential or a commercial application, you know, a needs analysis is really determined, especially with surveillance cameras. Um, people's uh, perception of what they're going to be able to see versus what they can see. And, uh, and on a commercial application, maybe they're seeing a really large area such as a parking lot with lots of sunlight, mm -hmm. or they need to capture a license plate or, um, in a, you know, in a bank, maybe they really need to see somebody's face, whereas right, yeah. maybe in a com uh, residential application, people would like to see, you know, their kids playing in the backyard sure, while they're yeah. not home, or they want to see somebody ring their doorbell, or okay. see, you know, right. the mailman, or, uh, you know, in, in the winter time, they want to see the uh, the snowplow driver knock over their mailbox, <laughs> perhaps, for to, to to prove that they, they did it. So right. that must be a, that must have been a real request. Yeah, I feel like that's point. happened before. It's happened a couple times. I need a times, camera so I so. can see the snowplow guy. Anyway, <laughs> so. Um, Tom, I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit about the, the wireless cameras that are used. Sure. Um, I, I think, Justin, the wireless is a little bit of a misnomer, mm -hmm. and here's the reason why. Um, the wireless cameras are marketed primarily towards residential consumers, and there's mm -hmm. a, a large variety of them out there. Mm -hmm. um, but most of the wireless cameras today still have to be plugged into a power source. Sure. So if you can imagine some of these applications that Bill is talking about where you're going to put a camera up on a wall, you still have a cord going down and plugging in for power. So it's not really truly wireless from that sense. Right. Um, there, is a, there are, is one manufacturer I can think of that does make a battery operated camera that's sure. kind of a unique solution sure. that, that's uh, attached to your wall by a magnetic base. And so sure. you put that up and put it in some magnet, it works great. 
Uh, but that's really the only technology out there. And the problem with those is as the batteries get weaker and weaker because you recharge them, your runtime is less and less and less. So, I mean, each one of these solutions has its own sort of advantages and disadvantages. Um, so wireless is really do-it-yourself or residential. Um, jumps on your Wi-Fi, which yeah. can be good and bad uh, because as Wi-Fi traffic increases, that camera is transmitting and recording all the time depending on what you choose for a storage solution. Mm -hmm. And so it can bring your, your wireless in your house uh, down to a halt, actually. Uh, the last thing I'll talk to you about wireless cameras is the storage. Um, okay. It's really important, I think, if somebody's going to look for a wireless camera, two different camps. Mm -hmm. Cloud storage that you pay for on a monthly basis and storage that you can have in your own home. Mm -hmm. And those both are, have different considerations. Do I want my content in the cloud? Do I want to keep it local? And then what's that monthly fee look like? So wireless cameras can be as good as hardwired cameras, um, but, there, but there are some of those other considerations to sure. take in. And I think point. it's important for people to know that you guys will actually um, sort of update people's networks, home networks, so that they Absolutely. can run some of these pieces of equipment as well. That's part of what you do here at J&K. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. You don't have to come with everything already installed in your home or, right. or the technology, they'll help you out with that. And along those same lines, you know, talking about how much technology is available, how much technology has changed, where do you see as far as the future of technology, where are we going? Sure. I think as Bill mentioned, we're starting to see a lot of these um, wireless cameras being, or, or hardwired cameras being very easy to use, these IP cameras. So in a moment's notice, you can pick up your phone and get a visual of what's going on. These things can alert based on motion or based on uh, an imaginary line somebody might cross to know that they're coming down your driveway, for example. That's really where the technology is going. Simpler, easier to use, mm -hmm. um, and alerting, uh, smart alerting, I guess is what we would call it. And that's what we're beginning to see today. That's incredible. And Bill, really quickly before we go, uh, give viewers uh, one great reason, or two if you have time, <laughs> to, uh, as far as why they should go with J&K Security Solutions for surveillance cameras. Well, uh, the segment we're on is Wisconsin Family, I believe. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, I, I, I like to drive home the fact that we're a locally owned and operated family company, have been for 30 years, we will be for 30 more. We have uh, other employees who are not family members who have worked here for 20 plus years. So there's that sense of uh, dedication and family that extends beyond just the ownership of the company as well with our employees and our customers. I think it's really important um, we're very well known and active in the, uh, in the community, and I think, uh, I think people will be very pleased with our services. We are uh, heads above the competition, I believe. Absolutely. Well, a family-owned well company that is there to offer services to protect your family. Absolutely. You so absolutely. Here we go. Well, thanks for sharing all this great technology information with us, as always, and thanks for having us. This is Bill Topol and Tom Spinoso of J&K Security Solutions. If you have any questions, gosh, just stop in over here at the Smart Home. These guys are fabulous. Thanks so much. Thank thanks you. for being here. Thanks to all of our guests for joining us today. Thank you for watching. Join us next time for Wisconsin Family. Today